For the last year or so, large language models and generative AI have been pretty much what everyone pays attention to when something comes out when it comes to new models or what you can do locally. And I think there's some other kinds of models that really deserve some more attention. And one of those are computer vision models or models that are just classifying things in real time. And the real time part of that is the most important. So you've probably seen videos uh, in China of government systems that try to identify people's faces or try to identify cars. And these systems have been around for a little while, but the hardware and tooling necessary to run them on your own really hasn't. The systems that make this possible generally use tons of GPU compute or specialized video processing units that the average person just doesn't have access to. And there are open source projects that let you do this right now. So for instance, there's an open source project called Frigate, and they've actually made it possible to use the Google Coral uh, TPU accelerator to run this on your home. And granted, it's broken into zones and it's a bit more basic, but the idea here is it can make your open source security system a bit more capable. And that's cool and all, but it's pretty basic. So I want to go over two models today, and they're each advanced for their own reasons. One is pushing the boundaries of what's possible in terms of real time, and the other is one of the smallest models I've seen do this that really impressed me. So welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So the first model I want to talk about today was actually brought to my attention by Skull on Twitter. And basically, he's a developer for a really cool computer vision project called RoboFlow, which is also open source and focused on using kind of less GPU power. And this model is incredible. So this model is called YOLO World, which is a uh, SOTA open vocabulary object detector that outperforms previous models in terms of accuracy and speed. And by speed, that pretty much means at 52 FPS and with a rough precision of uh, 35.4 AP on a NVIDIA V100. Now, the V100 is not a cheap GPU, but this is a pretty old GPU. And what's curious about the V100 relative to other common GPUs is it has far more um, video coprocessing built in. So most NVIDIA GPUs nowadays have this InVenc uh, coprocessor. And for those of you who don't know, um, it's basically a dedicated H.265 encoder and decoder. So for gamers, this is used to very quickly offload uh, transcoding and encoding, like for Twitch or YouTube Live. What's interesting is these are actually even more important when you're doing live video computer vision, specifically because there's much more video processing that has to be done in terms of extracting frames really quickly and streaming those to something else in GPU memory. And this is important in the case of a V100 because even the RTX 3090 and 4090 only have one of these, and they can handle up to five concurrent streams. There are some kind of hacky ways you can get around this to get up to 30 concurrent streams. What's crazy is the V100 actually has four of these coprocessors and can handle upwards of 120 concurrent streams, which if we think about this, you can think about this uh, in terms of 120 concurrent streams of individual frames to send to an AI model that's also running on the GPU. So what's cool is these Invec coprocessors are actually a separate chip, a totally outside of the GPU, which is also pretty cool. So I'm going to try to run this on a 4090 just to see how fast it goes. But yeah, it's really, really fast. You can see looking at this cute dog, it can differentiate the dog, the ears, eyes, and nose. And it's just really cool to see this happen basically in real time. And the paper is pretty interesting. I'm not going to get too far into that, but if you want to see a in-depth kind of breakdown, we can do that. Just let me know in the comments. And what's interesting is you basically just need an image and a prompt or list of categories you want to detect. This is a really cool approach because if you've used something like uh, Segment Anything from Meta, you'll know that the classes it's trying to detect or the objects it's looking for are actually predefined. And one of the harder things to do is to actually provide it with a novel object to classify or something that the model when it was trained didn't actually know to see. So a good example of this could be if you wanted to see different kinds of mushrooms in videos or see different types of growth that you consider good or bad in a plant. You can do that with segment anything, but it's a lot harder. And in this case, Skull said he used dog, eye, ear, nose, tongue, backpack, person, leash. The model isn't perfect, but this is really pretty good. And what I like about this is we're just looking at a single frame. And with computer vision models, the right way to think about these models is they're very similar to conventional classification models, except the way inference is architected has to be done carefully because you're working with tens or hundreds of images per second for every given source, which is when the compute really comes in and is kind of heavy. And what's pretty cool is, as we saw in that demo video before, uh, if you prompt against YOLO world, it's incredibly capable. Like, for instance, you can put dog ear in and it will classify the dog and both of its ears, which is even a challenge if you sent this image into GPT-4 and used their computer vision. And it's important to note that YOLO world is completely open source. 
And Skull also has a great video breaking down some of the more technical aspects of this if you want to go watch that, and I'll link that below. So on GitHub, everything here is totally available. This actually came out of Tencent's lab, and it's still cool to see a lot of great research coming out of China. But when I talked about that last week, this is what I meant. I meant that they're really willing to share everything they have, and frankly, their computer vision model should be this good because they use it to, you know, pick up every face uh, of every citizen that's seen on a camera in China. There are still some development goals, which is kind of interesting. So the Gradio demo is live. We're going to take a look at that in just a bit. They have actually documented this very, very well in really good English, which is awesome for other researchers and implementers like myself to learn from. What I do think is cool is they do have uh, plans to advance to other development toolkits or deployment toolkits like ONNX and TensorRT. There is a certain likelihood we'll see some kind of MLX implementation, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. That said, this kind of work will quickly, quickly be tooled into AR applications. And we've already seen some of that happen just in the past week with the Apple Vision Pro, which is really, really cool. And I did want to go over their highlights here because I think in certain cases, it's great to give a high level, but to look at what the researchers are really excited about, I think gives a lot of insight as well. First off, this is a PyTorch implementation, and this covers both the pre-trained weights and the pre-training and fine-tuning code. So they're pretty dedicated to PyTorch. They say YOLO world is pre-trained on large scale data sets, including detection, grounding, and image text data sets which is why they kind of make it easier to provide more context or to narrow the potential set of things the vision model is trying to look at and understand, which is why it's so good and also part of why it's so fast. It's having to look at the context you provide it, not necessarily trying to extrapolate everything it was ever trained on. They say YOLO world is the next generation YOLO detector with a strong open vocabulary detection capability and grounding ability. YOLO world presents a prompt then detect paradigm for efficient, like I mentioned before, user vocabulary inference, which reparameterizes every vocabulary embedding as parameters into the model and achieves superior inference speed. You can also try this in the demo, which we're gonna do in just a bit. Their abstract is also quite good. I do like the results here, which is basically them going against their small, medium, and large models, basically saying with the larger models, they approach this uh, 35 AP relative accuracy which is pretty cool. And what's also cool is using this is pretty easy. I'm not home right now, so I haven't tried this on my 4090 yet, but I cannot wait to try this right when I get home. But in the meantime, if you don't have a 4090 or a GPU that's big enough to run this, they actually have a really cool demo. So this is something I started with. So this is uh, obviously a Photoshopped image of Tony Soprano holding a needler from Halo. And uh, you can tell it understands that this is a person. It does not understand that this, this is a needler from Halo. And obviously that's a little bit, this is obviously a challenging image because how many data sets know what a needler from Halo is? But, but now I'm gonna go and I'm going to change a few of these and we'll see if we can add some of these. All right, so I've modified this a little bit and let's see what we get. What I will say is given how lightweight the model is, it runs really, really fast in uh, this hugging face space. And I think it's actually something that makes this even more fun to use because a lot of these you have to wait, you know, 10 to 10 seconds to even a minute. And as you can see here, I added shirt, uh, this text here, um, eyes and nose. And what's really cool is even though it doesn't know what a needler from Halo is, it clearly understands given the grip and the directional way this is being held that it's 18.9% sure it's one of these. We have the eyes, nose, shirt, and person still showing up. I added bridge. So it, in the background here, it's still a little bit confused. But yeah, this is really, really cool. I'll link this below and I can't wait to run this on my 4090. Again, just super cool to see this running basically in real time. And I think there was someone on YouTube I saw who actually built an integration um, similar to, for, to Frigate for this, like for their own um, security footage. And I can't wait to see that. So the other model I wanted to show you guys is called Moondream. And Moondream has been around for a little bit. It's been around for, I think, just over um, three weeks to a month. And what's really cool is this is a 1.6 billion parameter using a SIG LIP and Phi 1.5, along with the Lava training data set to give us a relatively small, so 1.6 6 billion parameter um, computer vision model. And what's pretty cool is it's very good given its size. And I'm gonna try this out as well. And what's really cool is it actually is able to infer quite deeply into an image prompt. So it's not, it's not necessarily meant for um, video, but people have managed to use it for that. And what's cool is there are some demos here. So for instance, you can input an image and then say, what type of food is the girl holding? And you can see here that the model can clearly infer this is a girl 
holding something and you can actually interact and say, yeah, like what's going on in this image. I would say this is as capable as GPT-4 was when this feature was initially released. You have to question you know, how quickly OpenAI is really pushing development of this or if they're just not showing us their best models yet. There is also a demo here that I'll link as well. What is... So if you uh, understand kind of the joke in this image, um, props to you. Let's see if this works. So I like doing sort of humorous things like this because it challenges these models and it also gives us sort of some insight as to how censored they are. So my question here, uh, obviously this is, uh, this is a Korean leader named Kim sitting in a unforeseen Soviet facility. And we have the question of what kind of facility is the supreme leader sitting in? And if you understand the pun, there you go. And uh, this is pretty good. So it says the supreme leader is sitting in a tunnel-like facility, which appears to be a combination of a cave and a room with a desk. And again, we have a cave, which is a, yes, it's containing people and things, and we have a desk. The room has a desk with a laptop on it, and the leader is sitting in a chair in front of the desk. Totally true. The setting suggests the facility is designed for a unique and possibly secret environment, possibly for the leader to work or communicate in a more private and protected manner to purchase uh, the most overpriced street where no one actually needs. And I'll also link to this great post about Moondream, which was actually the initial release from the local llama subreddit. I'm not a huge fan of Reddit, but the AI subreddits are actually still good somehow. So I'll link to that as well. So I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, are these models you all would think to run on your own machines? What would you maybe want to build with these? Um, do you think they're as capable as I do? Would you YOLO a, uh, a 6x4090 machine to run all of your security camera footage through it? Let me know in the comments below what you would do. And um, as always, I hope you guys learned something. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share our content. And we'll see you in the next one.